This is the Louis T. Network. Hey, either you're outside or you're in the lab room. Who else could it be? But me, your man, Louis T. Welcome. You are in the lab room. Mid-season outlook. We're breaking down every single team in the National Football League, division by division, getting you up to speed on where these teams came from, where they are now, and where they could potentially be going. We're talking AFC North, arguably the best division in football. Hell, forget about arguably. This is the best division in football right now. No team with less than five wins on the season. They're getting it done right now in this division. And so let's talk about the best team in this division right now. The Pittsburgh Steelers, co-leaders of the AFC North right now with the 6-3 and three mark. One of the most inconsistent teams early on in the season. Really head-scratching because I had this team pegged to win 11 or 12 games before the season started. A lot of people laughed at me because they said, hey, the Steelers winning that many games after what they've done? This isn't a talented football team that can win that many games right now. And I said, hey, I'm telling you right now, offensively, with all the weapons they've had, they haven't even tapped into Dre Archer yet. With all the weapons that they have, this is a dangerous football team if the defense can just step up. We'll talk about that a little bit later. But early on in the season, you scratch your head. What's going on with this team? You, you, you put Carolina to sleep on the road, put 37 on their skull, the next week you go home and you lose to a winless Tampa Bay Buccaneers team. What's up with that? Then you struggle with Jacksonville in Jacksonville only to come back and start scoring a boatload of points and winning games. So what changed? Hell, you were dropped by 21 on the road to Cleveland. When, when did the Steelers lose to Cleveland by 21, no less? So you, you ask yourself, what's up with this team? And all of a sudden they hit their stride after week six and the biggest reason why the arrival of Big 10. Martavis Bryant comes into the lineup and it kind of fits everybody into their slots correctly. He's number two. Then you allow Marcus Wheaton to go into the slot where he belongs and everything starts to make a lot of sense. Ben Roethlisberger starts throwing touchdown passes all over the place. Six touchdowns in two consecutive games, no interceptions. 12 touchdowns in two games. I mean, that is insane. You look at this Steelers offense, third most points scored in the NFL to this point as we are at the mid uh, point of the season. Third most points in the NFL scored, 248. And since week seven, they scored 123 points combined. Hell, that's almost more than the Oakland Raiders, T Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Jacksonville Jaguars have scored all season long. And they did that in a three-week stretch. Since Big Ten has been on this team playing football, 30 points against the Texans at home, 51 points against Indy at home, 43 points against Baltimore at home home they're scoring points are these Pittsburgh Steelers and so this team right now is extremely dangerous especially on the offensive side of the football you look at their home record 4-1 and one at home which is great taking care of home 2-2 two and two on the road 2-2 two and two in the division and 5-2 and two in the conference that's a very strong conference record strong home record you want to see that home record turn into or excuse me you want to see that a divisional record turned into 4-2 and two with two remaining games within the division. You'd love to get to 4-2. and two. That would really give you a spark in this division. The biggest concern for this team moving forward is the defense. Even though the offense has been extremely volatile and explosive, this defense has been giving it up. And so if the defense can just show some semblance of life down the stretch, if they can get healthy, have these young guys stop getting injured, and kind of get some continuity on the defensive side of football, maybe some of these veterans coming back can help this team. They could be extremely dangerous, one of the best teams in this AFC conference, if you ask me. Let's look at this remaining schedule at the Jets, at Tennessee, then a bye week. So you've got two layups if you just take care of business on the road. Then you got a bye week. This Steelers team will be rejuvenated and refreshed and ready for the stretch run after a week 12, what, week 11, 12, 13 bye. I mean, insane. This is a team that could easily. One, two, three, four, five games after the bye could go down the stretch and clean up the plate after that bye week with games at home versus New Orleans, at Cincinnati, at Atlanta, home for Kansas City, home for Cincinnati to finish up the season. So that's a very doable slate. That's a very winnable slate right there. Bad team in the Jets, bad team in the Titans, bad team in the Falcons, all of them on the road, all of those are winnable 
games. Home for Kansas City, home for New Orleans, home for Cincinnati. So you've got a lot of games that are winnable. If the Steelers take care of business, there's no reason why this team can't finish the season 11 and 5, possibly 12 and 4. I don't see them going 12 and 4, but 11 and 5 is definitely within reach. And 11 and 5 will definitely win you this division. It's too competitive to think that anybody else is going to finish this season better than 11 and 5. 11 and 5 will win you this division. If the Pittsburgh Steelers can finish up the season 5-2, and two, they're going to win this division in the AFC North. Now we travel to the second team in this division. Surprise, surprise, it's the Cleveland Browns. At 6-3, and three, one of the biggest surprises in the 2014 season thus far has been the play of the Cleveland Browns. With that huge win on Thursday Night Football, they've staked their claim as a team that's for real, that's going to compete for this AFC North crown. And at 6-3 and three right now, they're a surprise to many including myself, I'm not surprised about the job that Mike Patton is doing. I, I told everyone two years ago, last year, that this guy is going to be one hell of a head coach in this league. What is surprising, though, is the play of one Billy Hull. Billy, Billy, Billy. Brian Hoyer has been the man in Cleveland right now. He's taking care of the football, making smart decisions, getting the, spreading the football around. There is no alpha male without Josh Gordon in the lineup. There's no alpha male out at the skill positions for this Cleveland Browns team, yet he's feeding everybody the football, making smart decisions. This team is playing good football, and they'll only go as far as Billy Ho, Brian Hoyer, will take them this season. So if he continues to play good football, does not turn it over right now, 11 touchdowns, 4 interceptions, or excuse me, 10 touchdowns, 4 interceptions, he's taking care of the football. If he continues to do the things that he's done to this point to get them to 6-3, and three, this team is going to make the postseason. You look at this defense, and that's Mike Patton's strong suit. The guy can coach up defenses, and wherever he goes, sacks follow. This team has given up the fewest points in the AFC North. We know the AFC North to be this tough, grinded out division with a physical mentality, run the football, play defense. Well, nobody in this division, point wise, is playing better than this Cleveland Browns football team, only giving up 172 points on the season thus far. Nine. Turnover differential, a plus nine right now, best in this division. They're getting it done, and Tashawn Gibson and his six interceptions are leading the way right now. And I talked about Mike Patton and his ability to get pressure on the quarterback. Wherever he goes, sacks follow. 20 sacks for this Cleveland Browns defense right now, including six by Paul Kruger. That money seems to be well spent now, and it's no coincidence that he's having his best season of his career with Mike Patton as his head coach. You look at this Cleveland Browns team, 4-1 and one at home, 2-2 two and two on the road, 2-2 two two in the division, 4-3 and three on the conference. 4-1 and one at home means you're taking care of business. With this soft schedule that you have because of the last place schedule that you had from a season ago, you need to take care of business. 4-3 in the conference, a little sketchy. Love to see that go up a little bit more in case we start talking tiebreakers at the end of the season. But playing in such a tough division, you're going to lose games. You got, you've got two games left in this division. You need to find a way to get at least one of those, if not both, if you are the Cleveland Browns. I talked about Billy Ho holding the key to the success of this team. The way he plays is going to determine whether this team is a postseason team or not. You look at this remaining schedule. Houston at home, at Atlanta, at Buffalo, Versus the Indianapolis Colts at home, home for Cincinnati as well, at Carolina, at Baltimore. That's a very doable schedule. And what you will find is that the Houston Texans are going to have a huge impact in this division moving forward as every single team, with the exception of the Pittsburgh Steelers, has to play the Houston Texans on the schedule at some point down the stretch. So if you look at the Cleveland Browns schedule, those are some winnable games. Home for Houston, at Atlanta, they're not a good football team. At Buffalo, that's going to be tough. Indy at home, that's a winnable game. The Colts have struggled on the road. Versus Cincinnati at home, you've already beaten that team and you've had success with them at your house. At Carolina, they're not the team that they were last year. And at Baltimore, that's going to be a toughie. This is a doable schedule. If you can get to 10 wins, all you have to do, 4-3 and three down the stretch, if you get to 10 wins, you're going to make the postseason if you are the Cleveland Browns. Now we go to the third place team in this division. The Cincinnati Bengals. I've already alluded to this with the 5-3-1 third-place Cincinnati Bengals this season. 
they're not as good as they used to be defensively. And it's starting to show because normally this team would be so explosive offensively that even if the defense had a little bit of a deficiency, you wouldn't even notice, you wouldn't even blink an eye, you just keep it moving. But because the offense isn't picking up the slack, that defensive letdown that they're having this season is more noticeable than ever. The Bengals have given up 211 points, tied for the third most in the AFC Conference. And they're the only team not to have amassed 200 points on the offensive side of football in the AFC North division. They have currently 197 points scored on the season. And so that's a negative 14 point differential for them. They've got to find ways to score more points. And it will help when Young, Fresh, and Green is 100% healthy. And he's back now. Didn't have a good showing on Thursday Night Football. But he'll start to get back into his group. But of course, we all know where this team is going to excel or de accelerate is with Andy Dalton. He's got the keys to this vehicle in Cincinnati. They gave him the keys when they gave him that contract. This is his team now. And if he continues to struggle the way he has, eight touchdowns, nine interceptions, man, a lot of Andy, Andy, Andy dope moments for this quarterback. He's got to step up. If he doesn't, this Cincinnati Bengals team, who I projected before the season to not make the playoffs, will be at home watching a lot of these teams in this division play postseason football. So, you look at this team at home, 4-1-1. One, one. That's a little disappointing because this is a team that last season, if I'm not mistaken, either didn't lose a game at home or only lost one contest at home. Either way, they were dominant at home. I believe they went 8-0 at home last season. And now, to see this record be 4-1-1, one, one, lose a game that you should have won against Carolina, you're de devoured at home by Cleveland. That's not a good omen for a team that needs to rely on on home field advantage and this is why they're one and two on the road right now struggling to get it done and if you if you notice six home games already we're at week 10 and you've already played six home games you know what that means you're going to have a lot of road games coming up down the stretch two and one in the division four and three in the conference conference record is solid not great you need to improve upon that but that two and one divisional mark may be your saving grace if you can continue to get it done within this division you might have a chance not only of winning a playoff spot, but winning this division. It's not out of the realm of possibility. So right now, the biggest question is, can you get it done on the road because you've got a lot of road games? Let's check out this remaining schedule. At New Orleans, that's probably a loss. At Houston, got to go to Houston and get it done. Everybody in the division, with the exception of Pittsburgh, has to play Houston at some point down the stretch. Got to take care of business there. At Tampa Bay, so three consecutive road games. That's a winnable game at Tampa Bay. Home for Pittsburgh, at Cleveland, versus Denver at home at Pittsburgh. So you've got five of your remaining seven games on the road. And those are some winnable games. Houston, Tampa Bay, Cleveland, Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh, Cleveland going to be tough on the road. Tampa and Houston, both winnable games. You need to get those two. And then Pittsburgh and Denver at home, another two tough games at the crib. It's going to be tough sledding for a team that has shown to be very inconsistent this season. I don't see the Cincinnati Bengals making it out of this division alive. But if they can get some good play out of Andy Dalton, who knows what could happen with this Cincinnati Bengals team. The defense has to step up. Andy has to step up. That's asking a lot of a very inconsistent team. But we shall see what this season brings down the stretch for the Cincinnati Bengals. Now we go to the last place team. And it almost feels bad to even say that. The Baltimore Ravens. So we find ourselves in the rear of this division. And it almost pains me to say that this is the last place team in the Baltimore Ravens right now at 5-4 and four in the season. Hell, 5-4 and four would be good enough for first, maybe even second place in a number of divisions around this league. Yet, they're in last place in the toughest division of them all, the AFC North right now. But this is a, a really solid football team. I call them the Tough Luck Ravens. Have had the toughest schedule thus far of any team in this division. Five divisional games. I just told you this is the toughest division. Well, they played five divisional games already. They've only got one game within the division left, and they've struggled in this division, have the Ravens. And you look around at, at what these other teams have been doing. The Browns, we know about their last place schedule. They get the Raiders. Well, the tough luck Ravens get San Diego. Good luck with that. The, the, the Pittsburgh Steelers, hey, they get to play the Jets. Guess who the Baltimore Ravens have to play? The red hot Miami Dolphins. So, you, you look around and you say, hey, you got to make your own breaks if you're the Baltimore Ravens. You've struggled within a division. 
And now you've got to find a way to dig yourself out of a hole that really you haven't even created for yourself. So you're five and four, you're three and one at home, you're two and three on the road, you're two and three in the division, and you're two and four in the conference. Let me tell you what's going to be the detriment of this team. Ultimately, when it's all said and done, what's going to be that anchor that sinks this Baltimore Ravens team? You see that record in the division, two and three? Not very good. You only got one game left, and that game is only going to be good enough if you win to get you back to 500. What about that conference record? Two and four in the conference, not very good. Right now, what the Baltimore Ravens are doing is they're feasting off of the worst division in football, the NFC South. They beat up on their Falcons, they beat up on the Buccaneers, they beat up on the Panthers, but that's not helping you in the AFC Conference. You're two and four against teams that matter, and right now, that's what's going to keep you out of the postseason if you don't turn it up. There's plenty of time left, you've still got seven games left on the slate, and you haven't even had your bye week yet. If you can just find a way to win some games, get to the bye week and come off the bye week an invigorated football team, there's still hope for you, but that conference record if it comes down to tiebreakers, is what's going to sink you in this season. Your Achilles heel right now is this damn secondary. Guys can't stay healthy. You're pulling guys up off the practice squad. It's just a mess in that secondary. And, and your front seven is as stout and as steady as it gets in this league. And, and those guys are the driving force of this defense. But that back half, man, is it bad. And if you could just get some continuity and some consistency out of that secondary, you could be one of the best defensive teams in this league. That negative one turnover differential, not going to cut it. you got to force more turnovers. We talked about that secondary, not generating turnovers. And, and this secondary have not being that good. The offense can't turn it over because the defense isn't generating enough turnovers. And so you look at this remaining slate. Home for Tennessee. Then you have a bye week. Then you got a stretch run of five games remaining. One, two, three, four, five, six games remaining after the bye. Got to take care of business. At New Orleans, that's going to be a tough get. Home for San Diego. At Miami, another toughie. Home for Jacksonville. At Houston. Talked about Houston impacting this division. And home for Cleveland to finish up the season. That's a very doable slate, but it's also tough in its own right. You're at New Orleans. You're at Miami. Houston isn't a slouch at home. You got San Diego, who's been struggling, but they might find themselves before you get to them. And then Jacksonville, got to have that one, as well as the Tennessee game in week number 10. This Ravens team, not dead yet, but they're going to have to start winning, and they're going to have to start winning. Not now, like right now. And that's going to do it for the AFC North, arguably the toughest division in all of football. We'll continue to run through these teams as we break down the midpoint of the season in 2014 in the National Football League. See you next time.